Welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, December 18th, 2013. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Roberto Maldonado of the 26th Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Monica. Political <laughs> Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN-TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN-TV board member. This is a live and interactive show, so we will try to get to as many of your questions on the air as possible. So if you have any questions for Alderman Maldonado, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Well, you know, I, I came to Chicago in, in 1979 from Puerto Rico. So I was uh, 27 at the, at the time, and I had come just for five years. I came for five years. I had finished my master's degree in Puerto Rico uh, in psychology, came here to pursue my PhD. And once I would finish my dissertation, I was planning to go back to Puerto Rico. And that was five years later. And 32, 33 years later, I'm still here. I lost my return ticket back to Puerto Rico, as I always usually call it. But I'm so glad that I stayed because I have had a wonderful life in Chicago, especially after Harold Washington won as being the first African-American or minority mayor in the city of Chicago. Prior to that, I was just dying to finish my dissertation and go back flying as fast as I could out of Chicago because I thought that it was a very racist, racist and segregated city. Uh, uh, in the city of Chicago. So gladly had a Washington won. I just wanted an opportunity as a minority to be able to make it in the city of Chicago. And, uh, and, and Harold Washington gave us an opportunity. And I'm also glad that I stayed because years later I met my wife, Nancy, and we have three wonderful, beautiful kids. Rene is 13, uh, who is my oldest son. Uh, Robertito is um, eight, Roberto uh, the second, and then my princess Raquel, who is with me here today, uh, she is five. <clears throat> Great. Well, thank you so much. Alderman, and if you could tell us briefly, what made you uh, have a career in politics? Well, you know, I never thought about getting involved, getting involved in politics when I first came to Chicago. Um, I was a psychologist, and I just wanted to finish my my degree and I never finished my last three chapters of my dissertation and that was by choice because I was invited to work in the Heart of Washington administration but I did wanted to pursue uh, some business career uh, business career as an entrepreneur which I did uh, for for more than 25 years or 25 years <clears throat> but then in 1994, uh, two years after I ran, uh, no, a couple, of, four years after I ran uh, the first full term um, uh, campaign for who was is now uh, Congressman Luis Gutierrez, I ran his first full term campaign for Alderman in the City Council. As you know, he had been elected uh, during a special election. A year and a half later, he had to run again, and, and I ran that campaign. Um, Bad experience made me run for office. Up until that moment, I was not even dreaming getting involved in politics. Uh, but being involved in this campaign and walking door to door with uh, with the congressman now, um, and I, seeing the, the faces of hope and aspiration um, among the constituency of the 26th Ward made me run for office, uh, may inspired me to do something in public life. So in 1994, I, I ran for county commissioner, which was the first time that county commissioners um, ran for, for uh, office district-wide. Uh, and then in 19, 2009, Mayor Daly appointed me uh, to succeed my, my predecessor, um, Alderman Billy Ocasio. Thank you for that, Alderman. Um, I believe we have a caller on the mm -hmm. line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, good evening. My qu uh, my um, question um, is for the Alderman. It's a two-part question. Okay, I'd like to know what's going on with the laundromat that's situated by Central Park and Palmer. 
because it's been shut down for several years. I'd like to know, is there new development going on over there? And I read um, in the, um, I think on the television that there's um, there's plans to make a military school at the Ames School on um, Armitage and Hamlin. So I was wondering if you could talk about those two subjects. Thank you. Yes, I, I will. Um, and thank you for asking. Um, that closed um, um, laundromat on Central Park and in, in, in Cortland. Um, it's been... I over the years I have seen at least five or six times that he has opened and closed, reopened and closed. And for the last three years, I, I have not seen any movement whatsoever uh, to reopen that as a laundromat or any other type of business for that for that matter. Um, it seems to me that maybe that is not a suitable, um, attractive corner for this type of business. Or maybe any other kind of business, and but there is either the owner, nor the owner, or any other proposed developers have reached out to our office with any plans to try to do something um, with that corner. With respect to to Ames Middle School, Ames, Ames Middle School has been a middle school for the last 14 years, uh, of which um, the last. Um, is a level three school today. Uh, it came out of probation after 12 years uh, to a level two, and now it's back into level three. Uh, and it's a beautiful campus. It's a, it's a beautiful campus uh, that could house 1,100 students. But over the years, he has not been able to develop a good track record that would that have to make it appealing uh, for the parents to enroll their kids at that middle school. Um, and so the school, even though can house 1,100 students, has less than 500 students, and the, the enrollment for that school has been, has, been re, has been going down for the last at least six years. Uh, so therefore, when I became alderman, um, I thought, you know, there's, there's not one single um, good high school in the 26th ward. Not even, we don't even have a high school, uh, but I, I thought that we could try to bring a good quality high school to the 26th ward. The Marine Math and Science uh, Academy, it is a, an, a military academy, which is a CPS school, by the way. All the teachers are CTU union members, and the only the, the only um, resonance about military is that students wear in uniform on a daily basis and they take one hour or jun of junior ROTC on a daily basis. Um, and the junior ROTC basically is PE, physical education, 96% of their time, uh, the one hour a day, is, is engaged in physical education. So Marine Math and Science has a record of admitting 95% of the graduates into a four-year four year university. Not, not junior college. You don't, you don't need to be admitted to a junior college. Four-year universities. And so the idea was to expand the curriculum, which, by the way, today the board, uh, CPS board, finally approved uh, this move to expand the curriculum at Ames to go from a 7th grade all the way through 12th grade so that with the marine uh, math and science academic model so that we can really guarantee uh, that our 95% of the kids that will follow that track from 7th through 12th will have the possibility at a 95% uh, possibility to be able to be admitted to a four-year university. I believe that the kids and the children from that neighborhood uh, do deserve that. And contrary to what the some of the few opponents have said, that this is a training ground uh, to send our kids to the military, enroll in the military when they graduate from high school. The fact of the matter is that more kids that graduate from Clemente High School, for example, enroll in the military when they finish their high school education than kids that graduate from marine math and science because they are admitted 
to a four-year uh, university. So there, therefore, they have many more choices than, sadly, those students that graduate from, from Clemente High School, which is not in my ward, but surrounds my ward. Thank, thank you for the question. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Um, you're watching Political Forum. is a community service brought to you by Can TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares. Uh, we have, if you have any comments or question uh, for Alderman Roberto Maldonado, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, thank you for that answer. Um, speaking of education, um, was your ward, the 26th ward, affected in any way by the school closings? Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, we had one school that was um, that was targeted for closing, and indeed did close. Um, that was Lafayette. Lafayette High School, uh, Lafayette School, uh, did close because it was a level three. It was underperforming uh, for many, many, many years, and it was on probation for at least eleven years of uh, some of the knowledge that mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. Those children from Lafayette, they walked two blocks away, two and a half blocks away, to Chopin School, where 100% of those kids that graduate from uh, Chopin attend uh, uh, Whitney Young. Mm -hmm. So for a neighborhood school to have that rate of success, to send their graduates to uh, Whitney Young. I mean, I thought that as a, as a parent of a, of three young kids, how can I deny the opportunity for children to go from a level three school to a level one, where there are chances to go to one of the top selective enrollment high schools in the city of Chicago? Um, they will have. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that was a a very simple uh, a decision to really. Um, to really um, agree to and I supported that. Okay, great. So um, they closed down a school. Is there any plans to open up another school? Right or? now, there are no concrete plans uh, mm -hmm. to reopen that one. Uh, as you know, as you know, the mayor established um, a um, a commission uh, to review the reutilization. Uh, for those uh, schools that were sh uh, that were closed, and I hope that something good will come uh, to that uh, building. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, and as you know, there is a moratorium for any any charter schools. So, so any fears that any of these buildings uh, will be utilized or reutilized uh, for a charter school um, would not be there for at least I believe CPS made the commitment for three or five years. Okay, great, <clears throat> thank you. So is that, that building vacant at this moment? Right now it's vacant, and I hope that there will be some plans to use it very, very soon. It's a big, big, big building. Uh, and that was another school that was very underutilized. Not only they were level three for many, many years, uh, but the enrollment was very, very small, very low. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for that, Alderman. Um, so speaking of uh, vacant lots, um, is there any um, economic development uh, projects um, in the 26th Ward? Well, you know, now Ames is going to see an investment, uh, a capital improvement investment, I think is about $7.5 million that CPS has committed to do from TIF money uh, so that they can retrofit um, the school to become a full-fledged high school mm -hmm. so that they can serve the 7th through 12th <clears throat> population that will be there. And I have to tell you, I mean, um, if 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 um, if what's going to happen at Ames is any indication of what has happened to the other military academies, high schools, which are CPS schools around the city of Chicago, for every every uh, spot that you have available, there are seven applications. For every available seat at any of these military schools, uh, there are seven applications. And in fact, we did a a, a scientific poll. In, in the ward, uh, nine blocks east, west, south, and north around Ames. And we took as the sample population um, uh, people ages between 25 and, and 55 because that's where we typically will find the, the actual population that would be parent to middle school population or high school. Uh, and I am an anomaly to that. Uh, I don't. I don't fit that norm. Uh, but um, and 72% of the people that we uh, poll 
um, were in support of the move of creating the 7th through 12th and Marine Math and Science Academic Model at Ames, which t tells me that the support by the actual parents um, um, community around Ames is exceptionally high. Well, thank you for that information, Alderman. We have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, Alderman, I know you had a, a, a coat drive and a hat drive for the winter time last month. I was wondering, is there any way I can still donate um, some gently used uh, winter items? You know, th thank you. Thank you so much for your concern um, of giving. Um, um, uh, of, uh, yes, you can, um, and thank you for offering. We did take our coats to La Posada. La Posada is a, a an interim housing um, service that is um, that is run by Casa Central. So there are 125 people that live there. Among them, you know, there are 25 mothers, and the rest are their children. These are victims of domestic um, uh, uh, domestic violence that they leave their homes and they are um, accept and embraced and accepted uh, into this interim housing service provided by Casa Central, which is called La Posada. So it is on Ketsi and Limoyne, but I will be more than glad to, to welcome and receive uh, your donation and we'll make sure that we can donate it to them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carla, for that question. So tell us a little bit uh, about that uh, coat drive. Well, you know, my wife um, came up with the idea uh, that, you know, we, we've been fairly blessed um, in, in this city. We, we have a wonderful life with our kids. And, and she thought, you know what, um, I, I've seen enough of uh, kids um, uh, as I drive around um, and that are not necessarily uh, well well equipped, you know, with their coats. Uh, why don't we do a drive um, um, for kids primarily uh, of of coats and, and and let's bring them to to La Posada. And that was her idea. After learning that, I have visited it, and it was a very very moving experience because you can see that all these mothers they're very very eager to succeed in life, and and it's so wonderful that as they try to find that first job in many years. Many of whom are they are they have um, um, an, educa back, an educational background um, that they have the ability to be able to concentrate doing that, while having the peace of mind that there is this great institution that will be taking care of their kids when they come back from school and they have their work study uh, rooms there, they have uh, other rooms like. Any family do have, you know, with their games, and uh, they have a uh, work study uh, rooms as well. So it's it's a wonderful place, and very inspiring to see that although these uh, mothers have been victims of domestic violence, uh, they still have that eagerness to really um, succeed in life because they really want to provide for their kids and their children. Thank you, Alderman, for that response. We have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have a question concerning uh, Dominic's. It's uh, the, the grocery store. It's, uh, the stores are closing in 10 days, leaving many uh, neighborhoods in uh, Chicago scrambling. There's 72 stores in Chicago, and only 15 have been bought. In my neck of the woods, uh, I live at uh, Rogers Park in Edgewater. That's like Dominic's country, where there's many Dominic stores, and there's really no future and where uh, what the future lies. So I know there's a task force set up by the city. Is there any... Um, can you give any movement? Is any uh, any thinking on what might happen? Um, no, I mean uh, Rogers Park is uh, fairly far away from my ward, and and I have the opposite problem. We don't have a major grocer in the twenty six ward, and that's something that I've been trying, begging uh, um, the, the 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 whole gamut of major grocers from independent, fairly large grocers uh, like. Like um, um, like Cermak Produce up uh, to to Whole Food, C calling on a personal basis, appealing to them that in the 26th ward there is a market. Should any of these grocers were to come to our ward, it will become uh, a destination. Um, Traders Joe's has rejected us. Uh, Tra Track and Bendel has rejected us. 
Not even Walmart. Walmart wa Walmart once uh, wanted to come into the 26th ward. So that is one uh, objective that I have to bring that portion of economic development activity into the ward, and I hope that we can accomplish that. I even reach out to Marianos to see if they would like to uh, to come into the ward. Uh, all I get in the 26th ward is a lot of lip service, except for one major independent grocer that is eager to come um, on the Vision and, and, and Central Park area, where he established his first store, which is only 1,500 square foot of a retail sp space. He now owns, after 30-some years, eight mega stores throughout the Chicago region, and he would love to establish and, and build a big store, but the space, uh, he has not been able to be successful buying or getting a space so that he can relocate near where he's at right now. So, But I would urge you to reach out to your alderman. Uh, in Rogers Park, which is my understanding, is uh, all of them more, and I'm, I'm sure that it will be much more is much more in um, in tune as to what will happen uh, in your neck of the woods. Thank you for your call. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. My name is Carol Harold, and I'm with the Committee for Media Access. It's a group here in Chicago. Uh, that's supporting CAN TV, and what we're concerned about is whether or not uh, the contract that uh, is supposed to be renewed for Comcast is in the works yet. As I understand the city council has to vote on this, and we want it to be up to the same standards that were set by RCN a while back when they renewed. Yes, it is my understanding, you know, that uh, the negotiations between uh, Can TV, and you can add to that as member of the, of the board of Can TV, and the city council and the administration has been very positive. I can tell you that each one of the members of the city council that I have talked to, we are really committed to preserve Can TV. We don't want to see Can TV go away, and uh, we want to hold Comcast and the other players of the, the franchise to, to really um, uh, live up to their initial commitment that they made to the citizens of the city of Chicago. Thank you for your call. Thank you, caller, for that question. Um, Alderman, I, I, will, I will let you uh, finish with that uh, segment. Uh, the, the show is about your answers to the, to the public. Uh, you're watching Political Forum, a community service by CAN TV. Um, our guest for today is Alderman Roberto Maldonado. I'm going to be showing his contact information. Um, if you have any questions for Alderman Maldon Maldonado, uh, his phone number is 773-395-0143. He's located at 2511 West Division, and he has a website, www.robertomaldonado.com. Um, Alderman, uh, thank you for appearing in political forum, and thank you for um, being a supporter of, of, of CAN TV. Um, are there, we're about to wrap up the show. Is there any final uh, words you'd like to give to uh, the public? Well, for the residents of the 26th Ward, you know, I've been very, very blessed to be given the opportunity to serve all, all of you. And um, I just want to um, uh, summarize that the three main issues of concern that I have as the city and alderman of the city of Chicago for the 26th Ward is, um, is education, is, is, um, is public safety, and also it is um, uh, economic development. And any input, you know, that we could get from our residents, you know, we um, want to think of our uh, constituents as the, as the um, eyes and ears of our community. So I hope that you will be comfortable and free to reaching out to us and to our office. My, my ward nights are... Uh, Mondays from 3 to 6. Um, you don't need any kind of appointment to come on Mondays. So I'm looking forward to meeting as many as many of you as, as, as we can. Thank you, Alderman Maldonado, for appearing on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me, Monica, and thank you, thank you for allowing me to speak to, our, to my constituents of the 26th Ward. Merry Christmas and have a happy new year to all of you. Happy holidays, Alderman. Thank you, viewers, for your calls. Our telephone technician for today was Steve. Please join us for another edition of Political Forum next Wednesday. Have a good evening.